In the past few days, I've seen some misconceptions about Baiju's kit, which is actually natural, since his info got released just a week ago, and quite frankly, not many people in the community can analyze pre-release info that well. The main focus on Baiju regards three things specifically, his elemental application, his supportive capabilities, and his healing capabilities. In particular, the first two have been a big matter of discussion, since they're key parts of what can make a Dendro character great in Dendro teams such as Hyperbloom or Spread in general. However, some people have jumped the shark, starting to make arguments for Baiju over Nahida in the role. In this video, I will explain why that's not accurate. First of all, let me tell you that, from a balancing standpoint, it makes perfect sense for Baiju not to be comparable to Nahida offensively. First and foremost, Baiju is a healer, and just like every other defensive character that has been released in the game so far, the offensive side of his kit has been balanced with that in mind. Think of characters like Zhongli and Kokomi, who even though they're 5 stars, they don't really offer that much in terms of damage contribution or even elemental application, if compared to other units in their roles. Baiju is the same. He has some damage tools, some buffing tools and elemental application, but none of these are particularly great. Let's start from the first point of contention, the buff. I've seen some people in the community express why, in certain situations, Baiju's buff can match Nahida's elemental mastery buff. For those who aren't aware, Baiju can provide a Quicken and Bloom related reaction bonus, which goes up to 40% and 100% respectively, for the character who's receiving his elemental burst heals, which only apply to the active character. The buff scales up with HP investment on him, while his abilities damage scale with attack, meaning that in general, you'll have to sacrifice one or the other. In a similar way, Nahida provides a buff just for the active character too, assuming he is standing within her massive elemental burst radius. This buff increases said character's elemental mastery by a value that can go up to 250, and scales up with elemental mastery investment on Nahida specifically. Right off the bat, it's easy to see an advantage for Nahida from a design standpoint, since her abilities damage also scale up with elemental mastery, and naturally reactions like spread do as well. So she can basically make every part of her kit better by investing on that stat, while for Baiju it's trickier. But now, let's compare the two buffs. It's technically true that, in some situations, Baiju's reaction bonus can be as good as Nahida's passive at full effect, for reaction damage specifically. Let me explain how these two work in the reaction damage calculation context. A part of this calculation is characterized by elemental mastery bonus. Reaction bonus and elemental mastery are both parts of this elemental mastery bonus stat, but there is a kicker. Elemental mastery is affected by diminishing returns in this calculation, meaning the more you invest on it, the less efficient that investment will become. Meanwhile, reaction bonus isn't limited by that, so it's theoretically more flexible. In practical terms, so with Baiju's buffs in mind, while elemental mastery investment has the advantage at low levels, once you reach 400 elemental mastery, that's not true anymore. This counts for both Bloom and Quicken. As you might have noticed, Baiju's passive buffs Bloom-related reaction damage more than Quicken. That's because Bloom-related reactions also have higher elemental mastery scaling, so naturally, Baiju's buffs has to be higher to match that. Basically, after 400 EM, you can expect Baiju's buff and Nahida's buff to be similarly good, reaction damage-wise. That's great, isn't it? Well, not that simple. Let's tackle actually realistic scenarios by considering three on-field characters that have a big role in Dendro teams generally. al Haitam, Keqing, and Sino. In al Haitam's case, Elemental Mastery isn't good just for reaction purposes, but is also the identity of his full kit. In fact, his A4 passive provides him buffs depending on how much Elemental Mastery he has, and his abilities have huge Elemental Mastery scaling. While Alhaitam is a character that procs a lot of spread reactions, 
they still just contribute to less than half of his overall damage output. On the other hand, Nahida's buffs will benefit all of his damage sources. In terms of damage increase for Alhaitam, Baiju just compares to Yao Yao's Constellation 1 and Dendro main character's Constellation 6, which is not bad, but also nowhere near what Nahida can do. About Keqing, she's different than Alhaitam since she has no elemental mastery scaling part in her kit, meaning the only damage she deals that's tied to elemental mastery on Dendro teams is Quicken related. Basically, this means that Baiju and Nahida buff the same amount of damage contribution here. In reality, however, Nahida's buff is still better. In fact, Keqing isn't a character you build elemental mastery on, so her EM base value will generally be low. As I said earlier, for reaction purposes, elemental mastery investment is very effective if you have close to none. Specifically, if you have less than 100 EM, even just 150 more EM can surpass 40% reaction bonus, and considering Nahida provides 250 with her buff, Baiju can't really compete with her. For Sino, things are more similar to Alhaitam. He has an elemental mastery scaling passive, which naturally makes elemental mastery investment more efficient than reaction bonus for his raw damage. Moreover, if you don't have his signature weapon, then you can even build attack on him, something that makes elemental mastery buffs more valuable. I've decided to analyze him too, because I think some people might believe reaction bonus might be more favorable over EM in a scenario like Quick Bloom, where both of the reactions Sino will proc, namely Hyper Bloom and Aggravate, will be buffed by Baiju's passive. While the buff's impact is bigger here, it still can't match Nahida's passive, as they differ by a noticeable amount. Basically, the only scenario where Baiju's buff can be comparable to Nahida is a scenario where your on-field character has very high EM, and this raw damage doesn't benefit from it at all. So only if you're using an on-field character as a reaction driver, think something like Quick Bloom Raiden or on-field Quick Bloom Lisa. Sadly, all of these scenarios look niche at the moment. Elemental application-wise, Nahida is totally superior in single-wave scenarios, while for multi-wave it's more complex. In general, Nahida just applies Dendro better. Baiju has two sources of off-field application, his elemental skill and his elemental burst. Assuming he only uses his elemental skill once per rotation, which is realistic for something like Sino teams, he should be able to apply 5.6 units of Dendro Elemental Gauge to a single target throughout an entire rotation. Nahida can beat that through her elemental skill alone, which applies 1.2 units of Dendro per hit, accounting for gauge tax. This puts her at 11.6 units applied per rotation, assuming 9 3 karma hits. This advantage becomes even more apparent when you consider AoE scenarios, where Nahida can guarantee full application consistency, unlike Baiju, who will likely struggle a bit considering the radius of his elemental burst blocks is rather small. Aside from this, the reason I said it's more complex for multi-wave scenarios is that Nahida's skill can be reapplied off-field, meaning Baiju's burst is theoretically more flexible app-wise, as it doesn't need a recast and will follow you around instead. However, you have to consider that Nahida's better elemental application means higher damage, and considering her better buffing capabilities and higher AoE damage output as a whole, I would say that this multi-wave advantage for Baiju might realistically not offset the damage contribution advantage Nahida has. Baiju compares better to the likes of Dendro main character, as they have the same application levels, but Baiju's is more flexible considering your actions won't be limited to a circle with medium radius. All in all, I'd say that the most popular off-field role for Baiju will be alongside Nahida and not replacing Nahida, as the results would be very similar as replacing Nahida with somebody like Yao Yao in that case. Again, it will be unfair to expect Baiju to even come close to Nahida offensively, considering all he can offer defensively, so overall, I'd say he's probably balanced. If you look at the bigger picture, 
Somebody like Jong Lee is also often a damage loss on teams compared to more offensive supports, but that doesn't make him any less loved, as most players really like the defensive tools he can offer. I believe Baiju should be evaluated under the same standards, so as a defensive character we can still provide enough offensive tools to synergize well with the rest of the team.